Welcome everybody, super, super excited. I'm gonna talk about the top 10 most in-demand tech jobs for 2022 moving forward. So if you are in the market and you wanna enhance your skills or maybe change careers or you wanna grow within the career, this video is for you. So hang in tight, make sure you watch till the end. My name is Syed and welcome or welcome back to Claydesk. As always, please subscribe, share, and comment as you move along as I talk about these top 10 most in-demand tech jobs for 2022. So let's dive right in and take a look at, at number 10, we have project manager, which is at number 10. So what does a project manager do? The project manager is basically responsible for day-to-day -day management of the project and must be competent in managing these six different aspects of project. And what are those six different aspects? Are scope, schedule, finance, risk, quality, and resources. These typically work on specific projects that have definite outcomes, have limits to have to must be staying in their budget, right? The typical tasks, by the way, so if you're thinking of becoming a project manager, think about this and know this. The typical tasks include planning what work needs to be done, when and who's gonna do it, looking at the risks involved, making sure the work is done to the right standards, motivating the team of people involved in the project, whether it's a remote team or in-house team, coordinating work done by different people. Also, the tasks include making sure the project is running on time and to budget. Very, very important. Some of the tasks include dealing with changes as, you know, as the project develops, as and when necessary, and also making sure the project delivers and to the expected outcomes and benefits. What are some of the skills that you need to become a project manager, right? Of course, there's a whole range of skills, but typically project manager have skills such as, you know, excellent communication, you know, meeting deadlines, whether soft skills or hard skills, and some technical skills are also good, right? So being able to motivate and encourage others, decision-making, all these are skills that you need. All right, so at number nine, Moving on to number nine is business analysts, right? That's what you want to be looking at moving forward in 2022 if you're looking the most in-demand tech skills, right? So business analysts are responsible for bridging the gap between IT and the business using data analytics to access or assess processes, determine requirements and deliver data-driven recommendations and reports to executives and stakeholders. BAs typically engage with business leaders and users to understand how data-driven changes to process, products, services, software, and hardware can improve efficiencies and add value. They must articulate those ideas, but also balance at the same time against what's technologically feasible and financially and functionally reasonable. So depending on the role, you might want to work with data sets to improve products, hardware tools, software services, or processes, right? So some of the areas or some of the job uh, duties or description includes creating a detailed business analysis, outlining problems, opportunities, and solutions for a business. They also do budgeting and forecasting, planning, monitoring, some you know, statistical analysis, pricing, reporting, and so on. All right, let's move on to number eight, which is Java developer. So what does a Java developer do? Basically, a Java developer is responsible for design, development, and management of Java-based applications. And because Java is used so widely, particularly by large enterprise organizations, the daily roles vary widely, but can include owning a particular application or working on several at one time. Of course, as a Java developer, you're likely to be part of an IT team within a particular organization, and depending on your enterprise is structured, there could be a single team or many smaller teams that work on individual projects. Some of the roles and responsibilities of Java developer, you know, of course, they vary greatly depending on the company, but typically it's designing, implementing, and maintaining Java applications that are often high volume and low latency required for mission critical systems. A Java developer is also responsible for delivering high availability and performance of these applications, contributing in all phases of the software development lifecycle. They also write well-designed, efficient, and effective code. They also conduct software analysis, programming, testing, and debugging, and of course, ensuring that designs comply with specific specifications. 
All right, next at number seven is .NET developer. So a .NET developer is basically responsible for designing, tailoring, and developing software applications according to a business needs or requirements. They also help in determination and analysis of prerequisite for software, by the way. And of course, the responsibilities include support and continuous development. And we know that .NET is a Microsoft framework that allows developers to create applications, online software, and interfaces. Typically, they are responsible for design, corresponding implementation, and further development of software. They also, for example, a .NET software engineer is also in charge of the analysis of a specific problem or problems potentially providing or developing the appropriate system requirements. And they also work on some projects, for example, and this involves the development of software-based solutions on various technologies. And .NET developer or .NET engineer, for example, they get into support depending on the field of activity. Typically, what tasks does a .NET developer have? They work on design, implementation, and development of software, analysis of existing problems, designing interfaces, programming .NET applications, and management of software projects of different sizes. All right, let's move on to number six, which is, all right, so data analyst is next. So generally speaking, a data analyst will retrieve and gather data, organize it, and use it to reach meaningful conclusions. So data analysts typically work varies depending on the type of data and that they're working with. For example, they could be working with sales data, social media, inventory, and so on, as well as some specific client project data also. So typically enterprise companies in nearly every industry can benefit from the work of data analysts. So they don't need to be in the tech industry. They can be in healthcare, to retail, to fast food chains. So the insights that these data analysts bring to an organization can be valuable to employers who want to know more about the needs of the consumer or end user. So what are some of the common data analyst responsibilities, right? So they help producing reports, for example, spotting patterns in the data, collaborating with others. They also collect and set up the infrastructure, right? So these are the typical job responsibilities for data analysts. Product owner. The product owner, also known as a PO, is a member of the Agile team responsible for defining stories and prioritizing the team backlog to streamline the execution of program priorities, at the same time maintaining the conceptual and technical integrity of the features or components of the team product owner basically has a significant role, by the way, in maximizing the value produced by the team, at the same time ensuring the user stories meet the user's needs and comply with definition of done, right? That's the buzzword. For most enterprise organizations that move to agile technology, uh, this is new and critical role, typically translating into a full-time position, basically, and these are really, really highly efficient, skilled individuals, and they require one product owner to support each agile team, or at most two teams. Many duties that the product owner can do from preparation and participation, for example, in high-level meetings, the entire agile team, which includes the PO, also work together to determine their team objectives and, of course, the upcoming objectives as well. For example, they're also responsible for iteration execution, maintaining the team backlog, right? So that's all part of the product owner duties. All right, so let's dive into a data engineer. So basically, data engineering is a practice designing and building systems for collecting, storing, and analyzing data at scale. It's a broad field, of course, but with application in just about every industry. Organizations have the ability to collect massive amounts of data, and they do typically, but they need the right people and technology to ensure the data is highly usable state, right? And that's where the data engineer comes into play. What do these guys do? What does a data engineer do? They work in a variety of settings to build systems that collect, manage, and convert raw data into usable information for data scientists, right? And business analysts to interpret. Their ultimate goal is to make data accessible so that organizations can use it to evaluate and optimize their performance. Some of the common duties, job responsibilities for data engineers are simply to acquire data sets, 
that align with business needs. They also develop algorithms, right, to transform data into useful, actionable information. Data engineers also build, test, and maintain database pipeline architectures. They collaborate with management. They create new data validation methods and data analysis tools. All right, let's dive into at number three, which is a data scientist. Now that's a new breed of analytical data expert who have the technical skills to solve complex problems. And of course, the curiosity to explore what problems need to be solved. They're part mathematician, part computer scientist. So if you're good at math, that's the way you want to take a look at, right? And of course, because they straddle between both the business and IT worlds, they're highly sought after and well paid. Typical job duties for data scientists include collecting large amounts of unruly data and transforming this data into a more usable format. They also solve business related problems using data driven techniques. Data scientists also work with a variety of programming languages, by the way, including you know, R, Python, SAS. They also have a solid grasp of statistics, including statistical tests and distributions. They always stay on top of analytical techniques such as machine learning, deep learning, and text analysis, right? They also are good at communicating and collaborating because they have both IT and business backgrounds. All right, let's move on to number two, which is a security engineer. At number two, right? So security engineers are responsible for testing and screening security software and for monitoring networks and systems for security breaches or intrusions because yes we have to worry about hackers these days and cybersecurity is ever growing now a security engineer can also resolve possible causes of security threats early on by looking at things from a security perspective and recommending enhancements to senior management so some of the duties and responsibilities of security engineers have, for example, developing a set of security standards and practices, creating new ways to solve existing production security issues. They also recommend security enhancements to management. They install and use software such as firewalls, data encryption programs. They also assist with installation or processing of new security products and procedures. Not to mention, of course, security engineers also conduct scans of network to find vulnerabilities, they do penetration testing and monitor networks. All right, so let's dive into our first at number one, right? That's what we're looking at. At number one is DevOps engineer. All right, so DevOps engineer is 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 fascinating because this role or this job is ever, ever growing and it is at number one most in-demand tech skill, yeah, as per Claydesk, right? That's, that's our analysis. All right, so a DevOps engineer introduces processes, tools, and methodologies to balance needs throughout the software development lifecycle from coding and deployment to maintenance and updates. What do these DevOps engineers do, by the way, right? So DevOps engineers reduce that complexity, basically closing the gap between actions needed to quickly change an application and the tasks that maintain its reliability. And of course, as a DevOps engineer, you're always, always involved in automating the entire pipeline. Development teams and IT operations teams can have different skills, right, and different goals. So developers want to introduce new features to the application, while operation teams want to preserve the stability of an application once it is released. So there you go. You need the DevOps engineer to balance between the operations and the developers. And that's what DevOps is all about, the unification and automation of processes. And DevOps engineers are instrumental in combining code, application maintenance, and application development. So as a DevOps engineer, for example, whether you're AWS or Azure DevOps, or for example, you get to Red Hat or IBM or even Google Cloud, right? All of these DevOps engineers, they're basically are into tasks that rely on understanding not only development life cycles, but DevOps culture and its philosophy, practices, and tools. So with an agile environment, for example, developers, system admins, and programmers can be siloed, right? Working on the same product, but not sharing information necessary to ensure value to the user. Now, some organizations, of course, they hire professionals to perform DevOps, like consultants or senior DevOps engineers or IT architects within their workflows. But because 
DevOps adoption depends on changes to culture and process. It takes a while for enterprise organizations to actually bridge the gap. And that's really what the need of right now moving in 2022, that's why we have it on as number one on our list is DevOps engineer. If you need more information, of course, about how to become a DevOps engineer, please go check out our other videos and take our full courses right here free on this channel. And of course, with this, these are the top 10 in-demand tech skills that you need moving forward in 2022. Let me know, comment below. If you have any questions, post right here. I'll be happy to answer and make sure you like, comment and subscribe. As always, my name is Syed. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.